Uh, yeah, hello everybody. Um, I hope you're doing well as well. Uh, welcome to the Media, uh, Media Tracker Essentials Workshop. Um, today in this workshop, I will show you how to use the Media Tracker a little bit more efficiently and how to improve your sequences um, in general. I will try to explain the most used triggers, how I personally use them um, or how to properly use them in your map and also talk a bit more about them in general. Um, I will do a live example um, of how I will put tackle the media tracker work of a map when I open it or when I want to do this. Um, in general, I will try to keep the difficulty as easy as possible for this, um, but depending on the questions and maybe on the um, separate triggers I will do, it will go, it, uh, will go uh, into a bit advanced territory as well. Um, if you missed something or didn't understand something right away, feel free to check out the recording, um, as Toolfit already told, um, will be put up to YouTube later. All right. That is my intro, let's get started. So hopefully, yes, there we are. All right, so for context, this is one of my older track of the days, um, which I think I cleared mostly everything. If not, then I will just do it later. Um, so for example, we have this map, and if we want to do a intro, or for example, anything in the meter tracker, you see on the bottom right, the meter tracker button, and then you get presented with five different things, um, you can disregard the podium. Uh, this is not really used anywhere. Uh, this is something from the older games. Um, the most important things is the intro, in-game and ambience. End race is rarely used and I personally would recommend against using it because most people, um, after driving a PB, want to see the PB from the normal perspe uh, perspective. But if you want to have like a specific cinematic after uh, somebody drove a run, you can still do this in the end game. Uh, let me just remove everything so we start from scratch. So I want to start with the intro, which is basically everything that runs before the map is played. Um, you can see uh, that there is basically nothing here and you start with the orbital camera. There are different camera types you can move in the media tracker. You can switch these on the bottom right. For now, you only have two. Later, when we cr uh, created some clips, we have a third one, which is called the clip camera, um, which is basically the live version of uh, what happens. The orbital camera is the same camera um, controls as in the editor. So you basically have the little dot that everything goes around. The free camera is Cam7. Uh, I personally use the free camera because it's more easy and I can go much closer to things. You can also zoom in with scroll wheel up or zoom out with scroll wheel down. Let's dive into the tracks. Um, when you click on the, on the plus on the bottom left, you get presented with many different options. You can um, use any of these, but however, for the most part, you only use the custom camera, 3D triangles, color grading, depth of field, um, fading transition, and shake camera fix. Oh, and also ta uh, text. Um, for today, I will hopefully use all of these, so you can actually see them in action. And um, let's just start with the custom camera. Um, I select custom camera uh, because this is the most easiest to use. You have the orbital and the path camera as well, um, but they are basically a toned down version of the custom camera. So when I clicked on the custom camera, you see that this also changed to clip camera, and we have like a track in there. Uh, each track or each like block consists of the block itself and a start and an end key. I can, for example, if I click on the start key, I can move around like in Cam7. And if I play the sequence, you can see that this is just, uh, this just a straight line from the first one to the second key. So for example, if I want to have a camera path from, I don't know, like down here, I can just copy this one paste here. I do this with uh, control C and control V. You see that I have the same place and what I can do now is just go a little bit left, move the camera like with right click a bit to the right and if I play this now I have like a smooth transition from left to uh, from right to left. If I want to have multiple transitions or multiple camera paths I can just copy this with control C, move a bit later, control V Move this so this is uh, flush. I don't know how to say it else. And then we do a second camera path, for example, from here, Control C con to Control V. 
So for example, now, this is very basic, by the way. So now we have, for example, something like this. I will do a third one just to make a few more transitions in between. So I will copy this again, paste it here, and do a third one, I don't know. Let's do it in the cave. You can also change the camera speed on the bottom right. Um, the normal one usually is good enough. So for example, let's go from here, control C, control V, and then left. I don't know, you can do whatever you want. Um, stylistically, whatever you want to do, it's all right. Um, I personally prefer like sm uh, slow movements because they look better in my opinion. All right, now that we have these three things, we can edit these keys a little bit. So for example, you see all the parameters on the left. For example, if I want to rotate the camera or move the camera after I've, I've placed it right here, I can just change the settings. For example, I go to 140 and you see that I move the camera up. Um, also, you can do this with rotation. This is the most used one. For example, I go from minus five or from five to minus five. You can see that the, the, the value changes over time. Then you can see that we have like a little transition with a rotational camera, which in my opinion looks a bit better. Um, I personally use the rotation all the way. So for example, if I start with five on the starting key of this one, I end with five. I start with the next one, which is minus five. So for example, I go from back to front or from front to back, whatever I want to prefer. I can also switch these things up from minus two to, I don't know, 10. And if you play this, it should, it should look a little bit more variable and much better in my opinion. So, but this is still boring. We don't have any transitions. We don't have like any zoom or whatever. And what we can do now is we can just click on plus um, and for example, use depth of field. This is basically just a uh, sharpness thing. For example, how, what the focus length of your camera is. So you can see that everything is not sharp. And if we want to change this, we can just move this one, I make it very obvious, so we can see what happens. Um, sometimes it is not very easy to see where exactly it is sharp to, so what we can do is we change the lens size to something very extreme, so we can actually see that the center of the uh, focus distance is around um, this house. So this is what I usually do to center the focus. For example, if I want to focus on this tree, for whatever reason I do this, and then after that, decrease the lens size a little bit. I copy and paste it, and then you can see that we kind of have this in focus, but the back we don't. After the trigger's over, the focus size gets removed because we have this unabled. If we want to keep this, we can just hit this button, but for, for depth of field, I don't recommend this. There are some shortcuts I've used so far, which is Control C, Control V, but also I've used my right click. So just a simple right click on the mouse in an empty field where I can move, uh, where I can zoom in or out of the timeline. I can also use middle mouse button. So just hold down, then you can move left or right. What I also used is control left click. So when I, for example, want to line up this run here with around here, I just have to aim. And usually we know that this trigger is at three seconds this doesn't line up. So in theory, if there is somebody who is very observant, can see the difference between this one sharp and this not. This is more obvious when we use transitions. So what we can do is we can hold control on a keyboard, left click it, and then it snaps to already existing keys in the timeline. Very useful feature in my opinion. Also like one of the most used shortcut, uh, shortcuts I use. You can see this works in on every key we have here. All right. Um, while we are at the shortcuts, uh, there are two shortcuts to kind of like split or uh, change the triggers itself. For example, if we want to make a transition here, we can use L, which creates a new block. So it basically splits the depth of field block in two parts. And we can do this as often as we want. For example, if I want to have three different depth of fields for each scene, I can do it like this. 
If I want to change the depth of field while the block is going, I can use K. So the shortcut K, which creates a shortcut. Uh, uh, sorry, not shortcut, but a key. And I can just change whatever I want here. For example, let me make it extreme. So it starts like this. It goes really unsharp and then goes sharp again, kind of sharp. Hopefully you get the point of what the key does. Um, so th yeah, the key is in the trigger itself. And if I pl uh, press L, you kind of split the trigger. So basically these two don't really have anything uh, in common. So it doesn't matter what I change here, it has no impact on this one. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Shake Chemix, which is a really good thing to just have as a background. So for example, what I do is I just make a trigger, lay it all over the intro and decrease the intensity by 0.2. If I just run it like this, you can see that it's, I don't know, it doesn't look good. It's too strong. So what we usually do is set it to 0.2, the speed 2.3. You have to figure this out a little bit for yourself, depending on your what you want to do. Then what most people forget is they only change the starting trigger and not the end trigger. So if we keep it running, you see that it starts smooth, but it gets stronger the further we go. You can also see the values going up here. So don't forget to control, oops, sorry, control C this one and paste it into here. So it is always at this value. All right, what else do we have? Um, 3D triangles I will probably tackle in the in-game portion when we do our GPS. Um, we can also add text, for example, I can just write hello. Um, what you can do is, for example, select when the text pops up and goes away. This is basically your block placement. If you only want the text in the second part, you can just control left click, drag it to here and to here, and then it fits perfectly. So it appears when the new scene starts and stops when the other transitions ends. Um, this is just the basic uh, text thing which you can also like put stuff in that uh, for example color changes um, I can also use like the usual dollar values so dollar O dollar W makes it really wide for example if I want to change the position I can either do this with the position parameters top down here or I can just hold right click and remove it for example to the bottom left as before it switches between one trigger to another so I only added it to the first trigger and as you can see, since I didn't edit the second one, um, it moves to the middle again. This is also a way, if we do this to, a, to the extreme, where we can do different transitions. Um, but I will come to this later when we do the transitions. Um, you can layer text all over. Wait, sorry. You can layer text over each other. So for example, if I take this, then we have two texts moving into the middle. There are some things you cannot layer. For example, you cannot put more than one depth of field. Um, for example, you can only have one depth of field uh, active at one time. It also gives like an error message. But if I paste it right here, it works. Okay, what else do we have? Color grading is what I would use in the admins. I will do this later as well. Okay, is there something? Oh yeah, ghosts. All right, for example, if we want to have ghosts in our, in our intro, um, we kind of have to import replays. We can do this in different ways. For example, what I would do is go into test mode. Just drive where I know where the intro will be. Then I press R. This is a shortcut for saving a replay. Then I just save it. Go back to the editor and then I can import ghosts. Then I have to search for it. I hope it, I think it was here. No, it was probably here. Um, there it is. I select the one and then you can see that it's probably at the same place. Oh no, it is driving in this case. Um, for intro, you have to add a time value because this is like the absolute time because in theory in the intro, everything is at zero seconds. So when you play the map later, you will see that most of the time the cars are just standing there unless you add a time value. You can see that usually this does this on uh, per default. So we see the time value of 9, which is 9 seconds. Let's see if this makes a difference. 
You can still see the car moving. Correct. So now if I want to, for example, stay at the car, I can just move my cameras and then we somehow follow the car. Also, what I did here is I had to move this one back because, for example, these two keys, if you, see, if you check the time, are on the same frame. And when there are two blocks in the same frame, in the same line, um, the second one gets prioritized. So it doesn't matter if I go here, I still see the screen. So what I have to do is move this a little bit off, out of the way, click this, and now I see the actual um, position of the camera. I position the camera, and then after that, I move this one back. So now this is a bit extreme. Let me remove the depth of field. Oops, sorry. Now we can kind of follow the car. Um, when you zoom out of the intro, you see that there is a bright part and a darker part. This is at exactly 20 seconds. Um, this is because on servers, the intro only gets played for 20 seconds. Um, it doesn't matter if there is anything after. Um, if you play on a server, it will just get hard cut at 20 seconds. So this is so people won't get um, like don't have to watch a two minute intro before they can play the, uh, the the map. In local play, because you have like the selection screen in the middle, the intro will just play until it's over. Um, yeah, I think this is most of the stuff I would do for intro. Um, this is like not really clean, kind of, but you can see the different triggers working together. Um, we still didn't make any transitions, so let me add this. I recommend adding transitions um, at last because if we... let me show you. So what I would do, the basic transition is the fading transition, which starts at the first key with opacity full, and the second key is opacity none. So what I would do is just put it at the start, make it a little shorter, and then we can see that it makes it from like a darker, like from black to yeah, from opacity to non-opacity. We can also copy this, move it onto this transition, but here we have to swap the opacity around, so we start with no opacity and then to full opacity. Also, because now we have this, we also can put it on the other side, where it starts from opacity to no opacity. So we have something like this. If we repeat this for every transition, then we kind of have like a nicer transition between everything. And for the end, of course, as well. So if we let this play, you can press Tab, by the way, to switch between the meter tracker view and the actual in-game view. You can see the your creation in full screen. So I hope I didn't forget anything for the intro. So let's jump into the in-game portion. Um, the in-game portion is basically the same as the intro, except you have triggers here. Um, you see that my mouse already has like a little box, and this is one of the most important things, because if you don't set the box, then nothing happens. So this is the start of my track, and what we want to do is I scroll up here all the way, and I want to make a GPS. For example, I want, if the player drives through this, I want a GPS to start. Um, so let me just record some, oops, sorry. Let me just record something for like 20 seconds. So you can see that it works. So this is the ghost I will be recording that will be used in the GPS ghost. I think this is enough. I will just save this, go back to the editor, back to in-game. I will also, I can rename stuff, so for example, I will call this GPS trigger. Then I add the ghost, uh, which should be uh, this one here. Yeah, and, is, and since we hadn't, haven't added any cameras, you can see that we don't see anything, but we see the ghost driving. In the in-game, we don't have to add the time value, except if we want to manipulate it. So if we have anything that is not um, like, yeah, as it is in the original time, then we have, then we don't have to add the time. So what we can do now is we can add a custom camera, snap it to zero seconds. Uh, sorry, no, 
Okay, for GPS, we don't need a custom camera, but we need a player camera. Then we go to the local player. Uh, sorry, no, local player. Then we can select the ghost that will be snapped to. And then we can change the camera. Usually you'd say do external to or the default camera. So if we do this, then we can see the ghost driving like this until the ghost is finished. And then after that, it defaults to a default position of the camera. So if we let it run, you can see that this is what the player would see. If you make it clean, I would put it up here so we know it exactly where it stops. Also, keep the last block active, turn off. If we test this now, it should already work. So I already set the trigger, drive into this, then you can see my ghost driving. If you want to, for example, have a nicer transition between these two, because this was a very harsh transition, what you can do is you can add a fading transition a bit later. And also, I will just do this real quick. For example, to two fading transitions. Make this one dark. This is dark. So we have something like this. And if we move the camera up here, what you can see the effect is will go dark and then bright again, so it's a little bit more fluent. You can also, since we are now at the transitions, talk about how we can also do transitions. Another way to do it very easily is to use text. And then, for example, just type in this and then make it super large. So like 1000 and then 1000 as well. And if we move this one to the right, Okay, this is a bit extreme, so for example, let's let it make it a little bit faster. And also this one a little bit more to the left. You can also do it like this. And if we change the color of it to black, then we have like a different way of a transition. It would also be a little bit more fluent. Depending on what you want to do, you can do both. Both is fine. What I personally also do is because you can see after the replay is done, you can see like basic view. So what I usually do is do like a little slideshow. So I, for this I use the custom cameras, select some angles I want to showcase. I will just do two of these so it's a little bit quicker. I don't know, very basic. Control C, Control V again. So the all uh, every time I use the same working methods. And now after this the replay is over, you can see that it switches to this one. But since it ends here, after this, it just stops. So if we don't want it to stop but to loop, we can also add a repeat track segment, hit this and then you can see like a green line. And now per default it sees, okay, these two have to be repeated and now if you let it play, it just repeats it over and over without you to having copy and paste this a million times. So th this will just play and continue playing. You can do this with multiple things. For example, if you want to add the GPS time, uh, let's just say, I don't know, GPS time, something like this, I don't know, let to the bottom. Uh, and if we have a little animation for this, for example, I want it like this, then it starts, doesn't get opaque, and then um, is visible again. So what I can do is repeat this as well, and now it does something like this. So visible, non-visible, visible, and then it does something like this. Infinitely, by the way. Correct. So if you want, yeah, I think this is it. Did I miss anything yet? Let me check my notes. Oh yeah, 3D textures. Okay, since this is a basic GPS that runs, let me show you how to make it a little bit more obvious that at some points there is a GPS. So what I usually do is I add a GPS info, which is a second trigger. 
this trigger we don't enable from here, but rather from the starting points. So as soon as you start, there's like an animation of 3D, track, of 3D textures that I will go to next. Um, that shows you basically that there is a GPS. You can also do something like GPS at the fake fin, move it to the bottom left, and then, for example, then it runs for three seconds when you start, if we unenable this. So people have like three, sec three seconds to decide, okay, if I want to go there, and then it just uh, disappears. I can show this real quick. So we have the GPS at fake fin, and then after three seconds it disappears. We can do also stuff like, for example, if the player is AFK for a few minutes, that we still want to appear the GPS text. What we can also do is stop when player leaves trigger. So as long as he stands, or as he is in this thing, uh, in this trigger, the text plays. So, for example, what this effect has, I think it's kind of obvious, but if we drive out of this, then it gets removed. Uh, yeah, for example, if we check this one, I would just let it run for one second. This is also with another, with the other f uh, f transition I put in, and also with the text you can see on the bottom that flashes. Yeah, and then after the two shots I just did, which are repeating indefinitely, until the player resets. Okay, uh, yeah, 3D triangles, sorry. Um, okay, 3D triangles is a little bit more advanced, but you can do like in-game triangles um, that look a bit cooler, so they are not on screen in 2D, but actually like in 3D space. And what you have to do for this, this is kind of specific, you line up your camera in the way you have to want to import your 3D triangle. For example, if I want my 3D triangle to appear right here, I line the camera up. And then I add 3D triangles. Then we get like a screen with a square. Let me show it a bit more obvious. You can see the square here in 3D space. And this is where the, uh, the 3D triangle would be created. So what I do now is I import an SVG. For example, here I have a few. For example, I th should have like a GPS that I made, oh, and also I did a small mistake, because I had this camera angle, the GPS gets supported like this, but if we look from the side, it looks kind of weird. So, we can remove this, and then line up our camera again, and then import again. Uh, think like this, and we see that we have it like this. If you want to make it smaller or bigger, you can uh, you have to line up the oh wait sorry this arrow here so for example yeah you have to play around with this this is a little bit more fiddly and hard to explain uh, in this short time but in general you just import it and then hope for the best that it kind of fits if it doesn't fit you cannot scale this so you have to re-import this however you can move it around a little bit so for example this would be somehow fine, I think. Also for this, copy and paste. So now, when the, let's make it more obvious, so now you can see it in 3D space actually. And this also appears when the player is starting and also disappears when the player is leaving the trigger. As with the text that is fading in and out, you can also do like fancy stuff with this. So I just created key here, go into edit vertex, move this up a bit, Repeated segments, and what it does now, it goes up, goes down, then goes up and goes down all the way. We can see this in-game as well, appearing right here. And this is how you basically do 3D triangles. You have to play around with this because it's, as I said, a bit hard to explain and uh, needs a little bit, little bit of practice. Um, if you want to change colors of 3D triangles, you can do this. Oops. Okay, this is kind of annoying. Like this. You have to select and then you can change the color. You cannot, however, 
change the color um, while doing this because you always will change the whole SV uh, the whole 3D triangle. So you cannot change from black to uh, I don't know like yellow to black again. This does not work. It only um, supports one color at a time. So yeah, if you drive it again, you can see that the next trigger starts. And then place the sequence that we made before. Then we have ambience. Ambience is something that is active all the time. Uh, in the intro, in the game, and um, in the end race. Um, so for example, you can see that most of the stuff is here disabled. However, what we can do is add text. Uh, to, make, to make it more obvious, I will just make a text that is called ambient te ambience text um, that I will put to the top left here. What we can also add is fog or haze um, to make it more obvious. Then you can set, for example, a color, the distance, oh, sorry, the strength or the sky intensity. This is all stuff you can do. So for example, if I made something that looks kind of okay, I can copy, don't forget to paste it to the second key or else you have something like this where the fog disappears and then you don't see anything again. So if we validate the map already, you can see that everything that we put in ambience is already in the intro. And after that, also right here. Um, if you, for example, in the GPS trigger, we add this key as well, this overlaps the uh, Fokker Haze in the intro until this trigger is over. So for example, if we make it something like this, very extreme, copy it here, and then we drive here, if we have like the small uh, uh, Haze, then if you drive into here, you can see that it is very strong purple, until we reset again, and then it is normal again. Uh, oh, sorry, let's go back to ambience. In ambience, usually you can also do like something, a like color grading, um, where you can select from a preset, grade, uh, to change the color settings, what you also have um, I usually don't do don't use this because the the effects are very strong in my opinion, and you can also change the ends only change the intensity. So what I usually use, let me remove this, is the color FX because you can be a little bit more precise with this. So for example, what we can here is we can make the saturation a little bit stronger. Um, usually I would set it to like 0.1 max and maybe the contrast to 0.1. And then you can see the difference, what it takes. So this is usually to make the map a little bit more vibrant. Also, don't forget to copy the key over because else you will have, um, you will lose everything you do because the second key, like, uh, yeah, it's like the permanent one. So when we have done this, you can also like, there are many more settings you can do. You can do something like this, Really extreme, but I would recommend this. Uh, I would not recommend this. You can also, for example, edit the which is it? The far value, so you can theory only edit stuff that is very far in the back. Um, but this is stuff you have to figure out yourself a little bit. So play around with it. Um, you cannot like delete anything, or you cannot uh, destroy anything with this. So just play around and get a feel for it. Um, okay, let me see. Did I forget anything? Let me just check the questions real quick. Um, I talked about looping. Oh yeah, let me, talking about looping, let me do some basic like camp three in the wall ride stuff. You do this in in-game. I create a new trigger. I name it camp three start. I select the area where I want to, where I, where I wanted to enable. So for example, right here. So if I cross this one, I want the camp three to start. And here I just basically add the player camera, keep it to local player, then internal, 
And this is basically it. And if I want the cam3 to stop, we just use a cam. So we make a new trigger, but keep it empty and then set the area where we want to we want it to be disabled. For example, like this. Because in the media tracker, only one um, trigger can be active at the same time. This empty trigger overrides this one and basically stops it. What you do not want to do, and this is a common mistake, is add player camera and set it to default, because default is cam1. So if you do it like this, then you force the player into cam1 and not into the cam they are usually using. So just use a empty trigger, and if we test this, it should hopefully work. Oh yeah, sorry, okay. So cam3 starts, and right here it should stop. And this is how you basically do a loop over a ride cam. You can reuse also triggers. For example, if you want to have, if you have two wall rides in your map, I think I don't. Um, but in case you just want to do this, you can reuse triggers. So, for example, if I want, if I have a wall right here and start it here, stop it here, and then start it, I don't know, here again, I can do it like this. And then I run across this trigger. This one gets active again. Same with uh, the stopping mechanism. Okay, uh, let me go over some other questions that were asked. Um, I talked about other fadings, this is good. Uh, also, okay, weather change is not really possible. Um, there are ways, for example, in Trickmania Formula League, where the weather changes, but this is just vis visual, and then the physics that are changed are in the server uh, um, itself. Um, since in the Formula League you have the downloads enabled, you can do stuff like this, but otherwise the only way you can do this is by adding an image and then, for example, make a transparent rain image, uh, which then is overlaid. But however, for everybody who did not download this image, something like this appears. So if we make it like four, like four to yeah, basically display the rain all over, then you don't have, then you have everybody who's not downloading this has this on top and you cannot remove this. So yeah, you cannot, yeah, I don't recommend this. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, let me go over the questions. Okay, since we are somehow finished with the basic stuff, I would finish my presentation right here. Um, if you have any questions so far, please put them in workshop questions. Um, and I will go over them one by one. Okay, the first one is question. Does the time check change the time that is shown on CPs? Um, I actually don't know. I haven't checked this yet, but I don't think so. I think the time that you put there is only um, important for the ghosts, for example. But I actually haven't changed it. I don't, I don't think so. Let me check real quick. Oh, sorry. Yeah. If it works, then I have learned something as well. So we can try to put the time to five. And no, it doesn't. And also, yeah, by the way, with time, you can do something like in reverse. So you can actually like let cars drive backwards if you want to. Second question. Do you know of important 3D triangle? Is important only way to have in your map or can you create them in the game itself? Um, you can create them in the game yourself, but this is complex. In my opinion, I would just make a .png and then transfer it to an SVG, um, which you can then import into your map. Um, there are different converters online. Uh, I think I use, I use convert.io or something like this, where I can just upload my .png that I made in paint, and then um, it spits out an SVG that I can use in-game. Uh, okay. Question, how did you instantly move the trigger select box to the height your cursor is? Uh, I scrolled very fast up. <laughs> um, you probably mean like this. So for example, if I go to the trigger, it usually always starts on the bottom and it just scrolled up very fast. Next question, can you have multiple camera points linked smoothly to follow a path instead of cutting to different shots in your intro? Yes, you can. Um, 
this is something that I did, which I will always, uh, also showcase in, uh, in the end of this workshop, um, after the question part. Um, yes, you can do this. Um, the way I do it is use a custom camera. And if we have a, for example, if we want to follow the road smoothly, we can do different things. So for example, we can add the start and the end key. And somehow, because this is goes through the scenery, we can add a key here. Go a bit right, add a key here. Go around this, and then we can check how it looks like. However, this is not really smooth in my opinion, because you can see that it doesn't really transition in the same fashion. I don't know how to ex else explain it. But if we do it differently, you can see the difference. So. The best way, in my opinion, to do it is we create a starting point, copy the starting point to the end, then move it over so we go like each step at a time and we don't use the start and end key at this, uh, from the beginning. And what I will do now is I go a little bit back, create a new key, don't touch this key at all, and then move this to the next place, right here, do the same thing, go a bit back, create a new key, don't touch this at all, and only edit the key at the ending. And then go over to something like this. What this does is, it creates a much smoother transition between everything. Also, it's really helpful to keep the triggers if you change them at some point, or if you like do the steps each, um, to have them spaced out evenly. Um, because this is like an interpolation of Catmull ROM. This is just the way it works. Um, if, for example, do it like this, and you can see that, that it is slow, and then at some point it just starts zooping around. So the smoothest way is to have them spaced out evenly. And this is also how I did it in my maps, or how I usually do it in my maps. All right. We now loaded up the map and let's go into the in-game editor and then you can see, for example, that have a lot of uh, triggers. Um, some of these are for the trial that is on the side here where I, for example, also did very small GPS. So each of these contains a, uh, um, a ghost, a text, for example, for the transition. It's like this and then the player camera that swaps and after that you are on your uh, default camera again. The sequence is this one. So if we zoom out, it has more, many layers. So like three sides, basically. And you can see everything in white is the ghosts. Um, and you can see, for example, the text that, you, uh, that I can copy. It. For example, if we let it play, you can kind of see all the things that happen. For example, I have a fading transition here camera shot here, where you can see like also a 3D triangle that we should be able to find here. This is this one. Depth of field that is changing, I used keys all the time. And between scenes, I used a new block, basically. Correct. So in theory, if you work good in terms of like efficient and also um, yeah, keep your meter tracker clean. Oh, by the way, I also forgot to mention that if you press M or this button, um, it merges tracks that are named similarly. Um, so for example, um, if I copy this block here, which is a transition to a new row, then I have only this row for itself. So if I press M, Oh, sorry. Okay, then it moved another block into this one. But what it basically does it uh, removes the or reduces the amount of um, triggers you basically have. Uh, can you use different fonts your text and meter tracker? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. If you want to do this, then you have to do t uh, then you have to use two D textures, which basically is the same as three D textures, but two D textures are on screen only. But to my knowledge, there's no um, different fonts. 
What you can do though is, let me go to this text on top here, which should be this one right here. What you can do is um, change the size. Um, for example, I will just make it like 0.4, then it somehow looks a little bit different um, if we want to go for this. And yeah, by the way, um, here you can see like the text fading in and out. You can, as with the fading transition, change the opacity and do some fancy stuff with it. Yeah, control Z a few times. Can the meter tracker affect your total map size? Yes, it can. Um, every ghost you import um, gets included, or basically everything you do in the meter tracker gets included in the map. Um, I think the only exception is images, because you can make them in your mod and then load them from there. But yeah, for example, three triangles, depending on how um, many, many edges they have, um, yeah, it can make your map st uh, um, bigger. Also, from my experience, one minute of ghost you input in your map is around um, 80 kilobytes. So depending on how far you are with your map, um, you can have the total map size of 6,144 kilobytes. Um, you have to be really careful how many ghosts you add. Um, also, what you notice in the, that I actually haven't talked about yet, um, I think it is right here. You can see that the camera is following kind of closely to the car. And this is, did I not do it? Okay, I didn't do it right here, but in some later scenes. Wait, why is it not? Did it? Oh, I did it here. Okay. Um, you can also lock your camera to a ghost. So let me show it in a clean map or in the clean file, basically. So if I drive right here, I will just drive for like a few seconds more, then you can see it more obviously. So just like this, save this one. Then we create a new trigger. Import our ghosts. So what you can do here is target an anchor to our car. And now what happens is, can see that the camera without me doing anything is like following the car but relative to the camera position i have right now so what you can do is you can go in cam 7 to your car if i can find it it should be right here it's kind of laggy i don't know why but now you can see that it follows the car without you doing anything with these you can also for example put a few keys so you kind of move around the car or get closer to it, zoom in, whatever you want to do. And then you can see that it basically does this, but relative to the car is moving. So you don't have to move the camera in the actual space um, because it is locked to the car. I usually only recommend using anchor. There's also something that's called target, but this will force the camera to already uh, always look at the car, which in my opinion does not look it because it always looks the same. And if you only use anchor, then you can move the car, for example, a little bit to the left. So you can also do some uh, stylistic things like moving out of the frame or in the frame again. Okay, this is a very bad example, but you see the, the point, I hope. Okay. Yeah, there are many features what you can do. For example, also anchor rotation. Um, things like these you have to enable in each track because else it gets really buggy. Because what this does is if we move all of the blocks so it is more obvious, you can see that the rotation is also now locked in the uh, rotational axis. So the car is always fixed at the same angle, depending. Uh, it doesn't matter what the car does. You can always see it from the same um, 
view, basically. Okay. I hope I didn't forget something. Sorry if it was a little bit uh, back and forth, um, but there's so much you can do in Media Tracker uh, that it somehow gets a little confusing that even I forget something to explain. So I hope it was kind of interesting what I did. If you have any questions, now you still have a little bit of time to place them. Um, if not, I think I'm finished. Oh, by the way, if you have any media tracker questions in general, so even after the media, uh, workshop is over, there is still like a channel for this in uh, this Discord, uh, which is just a general media tracker. You can just ask stuff there. And if I'm there, I can still explain it or uh, yeah, give some feedback about whatever you want. Yep. We also have a couple of other experts for, for the media tracker. So you can always ping the role and within a day or so, there's always going to be someone that can at least answer a question or say if they know something about it. Correct. Right. Yeah, I think we're, we're good then. This was cool. We've gone through a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, again, we're going to make this available as a recording. So if you've missed anything, um, you'll be able to watch it back and see the exact things that Crass was doing. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, you know where to go. Uh, again, before we end everything, um, We'd love to hear your feedback about how this went, um, what you think about it, uh, if you have any ideas for how to improve it. Um, and otherwise, we'll probably see you soon for another workshop. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, Tim, if you have anything, um, now's the time. Crash yeah, the yeah. same. I think that was great. Um, you know, uh, it's the essentials uh, within one hour. So, yeah. Uh, until next time, I would say. Maybe I'll do one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kras. Uh, have a good evening yeah. or whatever time it is for you. And uh, see you next time. See you guys. <laughs>